For some reason, it feels like this deck just fell off the map, but I think it's still very competitive and it's really underrated in today's format. Now, the deck I'm talking about, of course, is Trap Trick. It's a mid-range style deck and it's a deck that was really popular at one point and then has just completely fallen off the map. However, it hasn't really gotten any weaker. In fact, I think it's gotten stronger for today's meta. So with that being said, I want to show you guys my Trap Trick build for the October 2023 format post ban list and you guys are going to see how powerful powerful this deck list still is with that being said let's get right into it okay so to start things off we are of course playing three trap tricks mermelio we're also playing three mantis and three pudica this is pretty standard i would say i don't want to explain this too too much and the reason we're playing three of each of them is because they all have very significant effects mermelio of course when it is summoned you can add a whole normal trap from your deck to your hand so this gets a lot of your plays going it also gets you to your whole tail which is really really powerful and then when it's special summoned you get to pop a back row mantis has a really cool effect as well where essentially you can add a trap tricks monsters from your deck to your hand with this card it gets you to one of your extenders which is really really powerful pudica as well is one of those cards that gets you to the field spell which is absolutely insane in this deck because it does get you an extra normal summon so that's why you want to play three pudica also when this card is special summoned you can banish a card your opponent controls and that's really powerful as well because it kind of helps you clear boards so that's why we're playing three of all the main ones and then we're playing two of the diania as well as two of the arachno campa the reason we're only playing two of these is because they are more or less mid to late game cards they're cards that you need other cards to combo with diana yeah you can't just open this and have a combo with it this is one of those cards that you're going to be pulling out of your deck a lot of the time when you combo and the reason you're playing two is because if you do draw one you'll always have one in your deck for your combo and then arachnocampia is just an extender for you this card essentially you can special summon it if you control the trap tricks monster and it's really nice because if you have this on your side of the field you can protect your back row from being blown up once which is really really powerful so that's why we like playing two and two of this as well and then for the honorary trap tricks monster we're playing three parallel exceed parallel exceed of course as soon as you link summon you summon exceed and this gets you to a rank four which is really really powerful and pretty much any trap trick with parallel exceed is like a, a full combo just because this is always going to get you to a rank four right so that's why we're playing the three parallel exceed and then to wrap it up for the monsters and the spells we're playing the one garden that i said you can search with the pudica this card is absolutely insane so during your main phase it gets you an extra normal summon which is the main effect but it does have another effect where for the first time each insect monster or plant monster you control will be destroyed by battle it is not destroyed so it is really nice because it does help you protect cards like your sarah does help you protect some of your monsters so it is really really powerful in that sense so that's it for the monsters and then just the one garden of course because you're searching the garden off of the Pudica. Now for your traps, you're actually playing a very minimal trap lineup. And the reason for that is because this deck is actually going to be played more of a mid-range deck rather than a trap deck, right? So because of that, you're only playing very minimal traps. We're playing three Holtea, of course, the main extender of the deck. This card is absolutely insane. Then we're just playing one Floodgate, one Gravediggers, and one Banishing. This is the newest trap hole card that you guys can be playing. And these are just the best ones that you guys want to play. You're not playing too, too many. This is just because you're only going to be really searching one off of your turn one. And you're really not trying to make the game too much of a grind game what you're really trying to do is you're truly really trying to set up a board make it so that your opponent can't really play and then from there you're going to be wanting to go for game and just you know snowballing with this deck which is why you don't want to play too many of these because these cards don't actually do anything for you on their own so that's it six trap hole cards for consistency a card that i like playing of course always is three pot of prosperity this is one of those cards that of course in a deck like this one where you just want to see more cards it becomes really really powerful so you have to be playing three pros if you don't have the luxury of you know owning pros and playing pros there is a spell card that came in the structure deck where i think you just discard a trap trick monster and draw two that card is pretty relevant as well you can just discard pretty much any of the trap trick names i think it works on trap hole cards i can't remember but that is a budget option for you but prosperity of course is the best one you can play and then i like playing three cautious or fenrir fenrir is one of those cards that's really good going first because you can just special summon it and you have an interruption like this is literally a disruption on its own and if you're going second it can help you break boards and get that extra body on your side of the field one of the things with this deck that i have found personally is it's really hard sometimes to push for a game and just otk and fenrir helps you do that it's 2400 it's a big body it banishes cards your opponent controls this card is absolutely insane so that's why i like playing the three fenrir and then for hand traps we're also playing three ash blossom two dd crow and three imperm so the reason i decided to go with these ratios is because first of all i wanted to keep it 40 on the dot and you guys will see here it's at 37 and then the last three cards actually to make it 40 are three evenly matched i'll talk about that in a second so the reason i decided to play these ratios is because they think dd crow is actually just so good into today's format and people i think they know it but they're siding it and i think it just makes sense to main it it's good into unchained it's good into tier limit it's good into so many different decks even like the odd rogue decks right dd crow is always going to be good into that's why i like the dd crow imperm of course and ash blossom very very important this is a normal 
normal trap, which is really powerful. Same thing with Evenly. Now, Evenly is a card that's really good going second, helps you break boards. Again, this deck can struggle with going second, which is why you want to be playing cards like Evenly, Fenrir, all your hand traps and whatnot. So that's why you're playing all these cards. But on top of that, this is a normal trap that you can discard off of your whole Taya to get your combos going. So if you're going first, you just use this as discard fodder. So that's it for the deck. It's 40 cards in the main deck. And I actually think this main deck is like perfect. I don't think I change anything up at all. The only thing that I would argue you can change is potentially the trap hole cards. And the trap hole cards are always going to be dependent on the format. Grave Diggers is always going to be good because it's always going to stop uh, monsters in hand. So that's really, really powerful. Floodgate is also really good. Just making your opponent's monsters face down and they can't flip face up is really, really powerful. This card is just one of those cards that I think is really good right now. It's good into Unchained because it hits anything with 1500 or less attack. And that's really good because the Aruha and the uh, the water one, I forget the, the blue one, I forget the name, but that one is also going to be 1500 or less. So this card is really good into those kind of cards. So that's why I like the Banishing. But of course, this could always be bottomless. It could always be a different trap hole card depending on the format. But yeah, like I said, that is it for the main deck. It's 40 cards on the dot. I didn't want to make it more than 40. You guys can definitely push it to like 41 or 42 if you wanted to play called by and whatnot. But I think 40 cards here is really, really powerful. Moving on to the extra deck, we are playing three Trap Trick Sarah. You have to be playing three. This is the most important card in your deck. And then we're playing the one Adipus. Adipus is really good because it does help you OTK. This is one of those cards that gives you monsters boosts and it just pushes for a lot of damage. It's your link three, of course, that is really, really powerful because you can go into a card like Access Code Talker and that's just really, really nice. So that's why I like the Adipus and then we have the Ad Access Code over here. This is just kind of like an OTK line if you don't have OTK otherwise. And then we're playing the one Asa as well as the one Underworld Goddess. Now Asa is really powerful because it's an Earth. If you guys didn't notice, all your monsters in the main deck are Earth except Parallel Exceed. But Asa is really good because, and against a lot of matchups, even though Kashtar is gone, a lot of people are going to be playing Fenrir and you can use this, take your opponent's Fenrir in the graveyard, which is really, really powerful. And then you can use it to link climb. And then one Underworld Goddess, of course, because it helps you out any boss monsters that you can't otherwise out. Those cards like Chaos Angel, Boral End Dragon, those kind of cards that can't be targeted, unaffected, etc., etc. This card becomes really powerful. Then for your Xyz, we're playing the one Rafflesia, the one Alamares, the one Pingicula. This is really, really powerful. I wouldn't change these up at all. Time Thief Redoer is really, really powerful in this deck as well. Dweller, of course, because this is actually really good into today's format. One Baguska, one uh, Exiton Knight, and one Zeus. Now, I will say, I think you can swap Baguska and Exiton for a Zeus package. And what I mean by Zeus package, it would be Borbo as well as like Chalkanine or something like that. And that's because it gives you easier access to Zeus. I decided to play these two because I feel like Baguska against so many decks is just auto win. That's why I like playing the Baguska and then Exiton Knight for going second as well. So these two cards you guys can play around with. Of course, Dweller right now is just too good to not play in today's format. So that's why I'm playing the Dweller. But in other formats where Dweller is not as good, you guys can sub this out as well. But right now, this is too good. These are the two cards that I say you could swap out for a Zeus package. But that's it for the extra deck. Lastly, I always like showing you guys a side deck, even though you guys have to keep in mind this side deck is always going to be up to personal preference. It's also always going to be up to your locals. So if you go to a locals, that's all combo players. You want to side for combo decks. If you go to a locals, that's all back row players. You want to side for back row. This is going to be a side deck that I put together that I think just makes a lot of sense, right? So let me just talk about it right now. And I think you guys will see what I'm trying to say. So one Harpies as well as two Lightning Storm. This is really powerful for going second, of course, just getting rid of any back row matchups. Lightning Storm is also really good into a lot of front row matchups as well. So I like the two Lightning Storm here. And then we're playing the three Gozen match. Gozen is really good because as you guys saw, the extra deck is mainly earth monsters. Your main deck is mainly earth monsters. And if you're able to flip Gozen match against a lot of decks, they literally just cannot do anything. So goes and match is really powerful. Also keep in mind, Fenrir is an earth. So Fenrir actually synergizes really well with your trap trick monsters because you can summon Fenrir. You can do all your trap tricks plays under goes and match, which is really, really nice. Then we're playing three anti spell. If you guys didn't see in the main deck, the only spell we're playing is really the field spell as well as prosperity. So anti spell never hurts you in any way. And if you're able to side this in going first against a lot of decks, it's really powerful. I should say though, goes and match is a card that you of course want to side going first, but going second, this card is very powerful as well because just being able to set it flip again on your opponent's turn if they have monsters with different attributes it kind of breaks their board so this is kind of like a board breaker this of course you're going to be siding when you're going first another card you're going to be siding when you're going first is three solemn judgment the reason i'm playing the judgment in the side deck is because if you guys saw the main deck has a lot of cards that's good at going second your hand traps your fenrir etc etc but uh, when you're siding and you know you're going first this is going to help protect you from lightning storms harpies feather dusters evenly match etc etc so three judgment and then lastly three d barrier d barrier is just going to be so good especially into the age of overlord format age of overlord 
Lord is going to introduce a lot of different new cards that support Manadium, that support Branded, that support Pendulum. And so for that reason, I think the barrier is going to be very powerful into the next format going into the Age of Overlord format. The only thing this is not good into really is Rescue Race. So, I mean, you have a lot of other cards that's really good into Rescue Race. So for that reason, this card, I think, is just really good. But again, you guys see it's a lot of traps. But like I said, goes and matches good at going second as well. And then because you main deck so many cards that are already good at going second, you really want to be able to focus on going first or again with against back row these cards over here. So that's it for the side deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. That is my take on trap tricks for the post Age of Overlord format. This format is going to include decks like Tier Limits, going to have Rescue Ace. And the best thing about this deck is that it's able to combat against all of those decks. You have cards like Evenly Match, which is absolutely insane in today's meta, especially against Rescue Ace. And then of course, in general, the deck is just really good into a lot of the rogue picks. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you guys did, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload seven days a week here on the channel, five short two long videos you guys are going to get seven days a week of content so make sure you guys subscribe to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching and with that spanko signing out peace